Hi everyone, my name is Katherine Chan, and today I'll be teaching you how to sew a reusable cloth pad using upcycled and readily available materials. Before we get started, be sure to check out the description box for more helpful resources, including a free cloth pad pattern, a full written tutorial, and a playlist of helpful sewing videos. Now let's get started. To sew a cloth pad, you're going to need a few simple materials. A marker, a pair of scissors, thread, some pins, and some hand sewing needles. You'll also need a blunt long tool to poke out corners, such as a knitting needle or a chopstick. And then you're going to need an iron and an ironing board. You'll also need some fabric and some type of closures. Let's talk about fabrics. So there are three main layers in a cloth pad. The topper, the core, and the backer. The topper fabric is the top layer of fabric that goes against the body. It absorbs the menstrual flow into the core of the cloth pad. Some common toppers include cotton woven, cotton flannel, and cotton knit. You can upcycle an old cotton t-shirt, a sheet, flannel pajamas, pants, shirts, and more as your topper. I'm using cotton knit today. The core fabric is the absorbent layer of the cloth pad between the topper and the backer fabrics. Common core fabrics include cotton flannel and cotton terry. You can upcycle old towels or flannel sheets, shirts, pajamas, and more as your core. I'm using cotton terry. The backer fabric is the back layer of the cloth pad that sits against the underwear. This is usually, but not always, a water resistant or waterproof layer. It's also usually a fabric that has some grip to it, meaning that it allows the pad to stay in place in your underwear. The most readily available backer fabrics are anti-pill fleece and blizzard fleece. These are both water resistant fabrics, but not waterproof. You can also use a layer of flannel as the backer, since it's a grippy fabric. However, flannel's not water resistant, so you'll either want to change your pad more frequently or add a hidden layer of PUL. PUL, also known as polyurethane laminate, is a waterproof, breathable fabric that's often used in cloth pads and diapers. It can be added as an additional hidden waterproof layer in your cloth pad, which I'll be going over how to do later. You can upcycle an old polyester fleece blanket or some flannel sheets, PJs, pajamas, shirts, or whatever you have on hand. I'm using anti-pill fleece today. Now before sewing, you'll want to be sure to pre-wash any new sewing fabrics on hot and dry on high heat for shrinkage. Fabrics shouldn't be washed with any fabric softener, since this affects the absorbency of the fabrics. For any upcycled fabrics that have been previously washed, wash using detergent to remove any fabric softener buildup. Remember, fabric softener is bad. If you don't pre-wash your fabrics for shrinkage, your pad is going to turn out wonky after you wash it for the first time. This is because different fabrics shrink at different rates. So pre-wash and dry your fabrics. If your topper fabric is wrinkled before sewing, I suggest that you iron it beforehand. Just make sure to only iron fabrics directly that are made with natural fibers. This means cotton or bamboo. If you're ironing a polyester fabric like Minky or Athletic Wicking Jersey, you'll need to place a towel on top of the fabric before ironing it so you don't damage the fabric. Let's talk about closures. The closures go on the wings of the pad and allow you to fasten your pad around your underwear you can use buttons, camp snaps, velcro, or metal snaps as closures. If you're going to use a button, I recommend using a smaller button size, around less than half an inch wide. For camp snaps, I'd recommend using size 16 or size 20 camp snaps. Those are the most common camp snap sizes for cloth pads and cloth diapers. Today, I'll be using a button as closure. I've also included links below that'll show you how to add each of these closures to your cloth pad. So check it out! The last thing you'll need is a cloth pad pattern. You can either make this yourself or use a pre-made pattern. You can find a ton of free cloth pad patterns in sewing groups. You can also buy a cloth pad pattern from established pad makers on Etsy. I've included a ton of links below to cloth pad sewing groups and cloth pad pattern shops. I'm using the share pattern from Versatile. Link is in the description box below. Now we can begin assembling our cloth pad. First, take out your core pattern, your core fabric, and a washable marker. Trace your core pattern on the core fabrics. How many layers you cut and trace of the core fabric is going to depend on the absorbency of the pad that you're making. Just keep in mind, the more layers of fabric that you're using, the longer it'll take for your pad to dry. 
Here's a fabric absorbency chart to help you decide how many layers of the core you want to use. I'm using terry toweling as my core material and I want to make a heavy pad, so I'm going to cut out three layers of my core fabric to make a heavy pad. Once you're done tracing your core, cut out your core fabric on the line that you drew. Now I'm going to pin the layers on top of each other, making sure the fabric lays smooth and doesn't bunch up. I'm going to take my needle and thread it. And now I'm going to sew these layers together with a running stitch. This video is speeded up for your viewing pleasure, but go as slow as you need to. Remember, quality over speed. I usually do a back stitch every four or five stitches to make sure my seam is secure, and I replace the thread as needed. So around here you can see me running out of thread, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie off a knot to make sure that seam is secure, and then I'll just cut off the loose threads and re-thread my needle as needed. Simple as that. So here I'm just continuing to sew all around my core. This may take a while, but be patient. The end result is worth it, I promise. Listen to some music or a podcast or put on a TV show while you're doing this. Once I'm done, I just tie a knot and cut my thread. Now the core is assembled. Our next step is to attach the core onto the topper fabric. On the wrong side of the topper fabric, aka the non-pretty side, trace the cloth pad pattern with a washable marker. This is going to be your sewing line, the line that you sew on when you assemble your cloth pad. Mark a turn hole on a straight edge of your cloth pad pattern. This is how we're going to turn the pad right side out later on. The larger your turn hole is, the easier it'll be to turn your pad out, especially if you're making a heavy absorbency pad. Now you're going to want some seam allowance around your sewing line. I recommend cutting out a rectangle around the sewing line and giving yourself at least half an inch of seam allowance like I have here. You are then going to cut out your backer fabric in the same size as you cut out your topper fabric. Same with the POL layer if you choose to use it. Now I'm going to pin my finished core in the center of the sew line that we drew on the topper fabric. You can also use a washable glue stick or basting spray to hold the core in place. Just make sure the core doesn't bunch up as you're placing it on the center of the sew line. Once that is done, I'm going to sew the core to the topper fabric with a running stitch. As I sew, I'm just taking out any pins that might be getting in the way. Again, I'm doing a back stitch every couple of stitches to make sure my core is very secure to the topper. I'm going pretty slowly because I want to make sure my stitches are as secure as possible, and I also want my stitches to look pretty. Rethread your sewing needle as needed. Once I'm done sewing the seam, I'm just going to tie a knot and cut off any loose threads. Now your core should be attached to your topper fabric like this. Next, I'm going to sew all the layers of the cloth pad together. 
Here's how I'm going to layer the fabrics. I'm going to place the pretty side or the right side of the back of fabric face up on a table. Then I'm going to take my topper fabric and I'm going to put the pretty side or the right side face down on top of the backer fabric. The right side of the backer fabric should be facing the right side of the topper fabric. Just remember, right sides should be facing. The pretty sides should be facing each other. Now I'm just going to pin both the layers together, making sure to pin outside of the sew line. Now if you're adding a hidden PUL layer, the process will be slightly different, but essentially the same. PUL has two sides. The first side is a smooth and shiny side. This is the waterproof side. It has a polyurethane laminated coating. It'll have a smooth and slippery texture. The other side of the PUL is a polyester fabric side. This will be slightly rougher to the touch and have a more fabric-y texture. So here's how you're going to layer your fabrics with the hidden PUL layer. First, you're going to lay the PUL fabric with the smooth and shiny side against the table. Now on top of the PUL, lay the backer fabric with the right side facing up. Remember, the right side of the fabric is the pretty side of the fabric. Then on top of the backer fabric, lay the topper fabric with the right side facing down. Again, the right side of the topper and the right side of the backer should be facing each other. Now you're going to pin all the fabrics together. Make sure to pin outside of the sewing line. This is especially important when you're using PUL because you don't want to poke any holes through the waterproof layer of your cloth pad. Next, I'm going to sew all the layers of fabric together. I'm going to sew on the sew line that we drew earlier. So like before, I have my threaded needle, and I'm going to start sewing from one end of the turn hole. I'm just using a running stitch for this and adding a back stitch every couple of stitches, but you could also just entirely use a back stitch for an even more secure seam. I'm gonna sew from one end of the turn hole all the way around to the other end of the turn hole. Go as slow as you need to, making sure that as you sew, you stay on the sew line. Do not sew over the turn hole. You want to keep the turn hole open so that we can turn the pad right side out later on. Once I reach the other side of the turn hole, I'm just going to tie a knot and cut off any loose threads to secure that seam. Now all the layers of your cloth pad should be attached to each other and assembled like this. As you can see, I left the space open for the turn hole. Next, we're going to trim around the pad and get rid of most of this bulk. First, we're going to trim corners, clip curves, and clip into inner corners to avoid any bunching and puckering when we turn this cloth pad right side out. Here's a diagram with more details of what I mean. So first, I'm going to clip into the inner corners. As you do this, make sure you don't cut over the sew line. You want to clip as close as possible to the sew line without actually cutting over it. If you cut over your sew line, you're going to break that seam and you'll have to restitch it. Now I don't have any outer corners on this particular pad, but if I did, I would trim them as shown in the earlier diagram. I have a couple of curves on this pad, so I'm going to trim triangles around it. If you have pinking shears, you can use those to trim around the pad. Again, make sure you do not cut over the sew line.
Once you're done clipping the pad, it should look something like this. Now I'm going to cut off all the excess seam allowance and trim around the cloth pad with scissors. As I do this, I'm leaving around an eighth an inch of fabric around the stitch line. If you have pinking shears, use those to trim around the cloth pad. Do this all around your cloth pad, except for the turn hole. Around the turn hole, you're going to leave around half an inch to three quarters of an inch of fabric. It should look like this once you're done. Next, I'm going to turn my pad right side out through the turn hole. Be sure to do this gently, as you don't want to risk breaking any seams. I usually grab the part of the cloth pad that's furthest away from the turn hole, and I try to pull that part out first. Now turning the pad right side out may be hard at first, but be patient. As long as you do this slowly and gently, you should be able to eventually turn your pad right side out. Now that my pad is right side out, I'm going to use a knitting needle to poke all the corners out. You can use any sharp but blunt tool to do this, like a chopstick or a pair of safety scissors. Remember to poke your corners out gently. You don't want to risk breaking any seams. Now, I'm going to tuck in my turn hole and gently iron and press my pad. This is going to give my pad a more professional look and get rid of any wrinkles or creases. It'll also help my turn hole stay in place. Doesn't that look nice? Now I'm going to top stitch my cloth pad. That means I'm going to sew a line all around the edge of our cloth pad. This is gonna do a couple things. First of all, it's going to close off our turn hole. It'll also add an extra seam for security and it adds a nice decorative stitch to our cloth pad. I'm using a running stitch and doing a back stitch every couple of stitches to make sure my seam is secure, and I'll re-thread my needle as needed. Go slowly. You want your stitches to look as nice and as neat as possible. As I finish top stitching, I'm just going to do a quick back stitch and then I'm going to tie a knot to finish my seam. And then I'll cut off any loose threads just like before. Once you're done, it should look like this. We're almost done. Just hang on a little longer. Now we just need to add closures. I'm using a button for my cloth pad. On one of the wings of my cloth pad, I'm going to sew this button. On the other wing, I'm going to sew a buttonhole. I've included a ton of links on how to attach your closures to your cloth pad, depending on what type of closure you're using. So be sure to check those out in the description box below. All done! Now you have a beautiful cloth pad ready to use. And 
And even if it doesn't look perfect, I'm sure it's perfectly functional and practice makes perfect. Remember, pre-wash your finished pad before using it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. If you like this video or have any more questions, be sure to leave a comment below. See y'all soon.